Well, uh, hi there, everyone. Meteorologist Robert Spetta here with you on today, the 23rd of October, 2013. Two typhoons still out here in the western Pacific. We have Typhoon Francisco, which is slowly weakening and falling apart. And you can just see that drier entrainment wrapping around it. But that will be the bulk of today's update. Main reason is because it is the one that's going to be impacting some major land areas out here. Although, on the other hand, we still do have our very violent Typhoon Lakima moving across the northern portions of the Mariana Islands today. And I first want to talk about this, though, because uh, by very violent, I mean the most intense storm system of 2013. On the face of the earth out here, we have pressure right now at 905 HPA. Winds is sustained at 115, gusting up to 165 knots on a 10-minute wind scale per JMA, the Japan Meteorological Agency. That's 10 minutes of sustained winds at 115 knots. Vice, uh, JTWC, they use a one minute wind scale, but they have winds much higher, about 140 gusting up to about uh, 170 knots. But like I said, a smaller wind scale, so the winds will likely be a little bit higher just based on uh, the duration of how strong these are. But the good news and the main reason, like I said, this is not the main topic of today's update. It obviously is a very important aspect out here and if you are in the northern Mariana Islands which most of these are uninhabited or out there towards Iwo Tol and Iwo Jima these areas right here on the Yokosara Islands you're watching this very closely but uh, it is going to be staying out over open ocean for the most part here tracking off towards the northwest before turning towards the northeast getting picked up by the same upper level trough that's my thing rebooting uh, the same upper level trough that's moving out of northeastern China right now that's going to pick this up and push it off there towards northeast as well so really in the long range it's actually going to start to merge with Francisco here, uh, pulling up what we call a, a Fujiwara effect. And that's going to be something I want to cover a, in just a moment as well. So a storm, even though it's not going to be impacting any mainland areas directly, it will have an indirect impact by affecting Francisco, which is, well, closer towards Japan here. But first, let's talk about Francisco, which is already producing winds uh, sustained out here across Daitojima. Tropical storm strength winds gusting up near typhoon strength at this time. Expect that to continue uh, to increase though as our storm tracks off here towards northwest. Expecting it to move just towards the west of Daitojima. Off here towards the east you still have Okinawa and now the southern Japanese islands. A lot of drier inflow wrapping around it. So expect rain showers here but I don't expect these blinding rains that you sometimes see with typhoons. Although wind sustained at tropical storm strength for Okinawa especially Especially on the northern and northwestern periphery especially um, that's where you're gonna be seeing out here as those winds start to cruise in from the north with our storm system tracking off here uh, of just towards the east of the islands and already you can see it here you can also see it currently on radar with these outer rain bands setting up here and even extending off there towards Okinawa now another thing that you can also see here on radar is these outer rain bands now this is a typhoon here but what we also are seeing is that upper level trough starting to dig in so we have the stationary boundary setting up there across um, western portions of Japan that in itself could bring a risk of flooding out here about one to 200 millimeters to portions of Kyushu, Chicago and also the key peninsula it's basically that unstable upper atmosphere combined with our moisture being fed in from our tropical system farther down there towards the south so even though Francisco is still down here towards the south and taking its time I mean by uh, Thursday morning it's just towards the east of Okinawa so it's not moving very fast right now about 15 kilometers per hour it's still gonna be really the outflow in the northern extent combined with that stationary boundary bringing some heavy rainfall and I think that's gonna be the main risk as far as mainland Japan with this storm system now going into Friday and then out towards Saturday it is expected to continue to track there just towards the southern portions of uh, Tokyo I think the timeline from JMA and JTWC have come more in line today I know yesterday I was saying it was likely gonna pass sometime on Saturday morning but JMA actually had it on Friday and JTW or JTWC had it on Friday and JMA had it on Sunday and the main reason they're kind of coming in an agreement now is because both of them are agreeing on this Fujiwara effect that's going to be occurring as our storm system tracks off there towards North Francisco is going to be moving here as well. It's going to kind of suck it in behind it. So you're still going to be seeing some pretty heavy showers out here. But as far as that center of circulation, looks like it's going to be staying offshore. Still tropical storm strength winds uh, likely as well across much of Japan. And that's going to be a major problem. I'm going to get into that here as we take a look at the model. So first, let's take a look at the GFS. Um, starting down here near Daitojima and Okinawa. 
And this is going into Thursday morning, still still about a 24 hours out. We can even rewind this a little bit more, and then we look ahead into Wednesday around midnight. Still seeing these pretty gusty winds out here across Okinawa and the southern Japanese islands, but it's going to be picking up throughout Wednesday night, which is today, and when I'm making this update into Thursday morning, you'll start to see these winds up to tropical storm strength, gusting even a little bit higher. Daito Jima will be taking the brunt of this by Thursday morning around 00, zero UTC. Uh, definitely going to be seeing winds here sustained around 100 gusting up to 140 kilometers per hour. So it is not going to be a pleasant day at all for the uh, Daito Islands out here. Now, as their storm system does continue to track off here towards the north, though, on Thursday, this is by Thursday evening, I still expect some pretty gusty winds because we have high pressure coming in behind um, the storm system over the East China Sea. It's going to set up a pretty tight gradient. So much as the southern Japanese islands, even though the showers are going to be tapering off, it's still going to be very, very breezy out here and definitely very large waves near coastal areas along the western periphery of Okinawa and much of the um, Islands. And this is the same out the same look at this at the same time period, but showing the precipitation and the pressure gradient. And you can see here on the bottom of the screen, Okinawa actually uh, is just starting to get that less precipitation, all that drier inflow wrapping around our storm system. But take a look at this along the northern periphery, extending all the way out there towards Kyushu, Shikoku, even western portions of Honshu. We're still seeing that pretty heavy rainfall that I was talking about, and that was due to that stationary boundary setting up. And this is by Thursday evening, so it's still lingering in the same area. Continue to scroll ahead, though. Let's uh, look ahead into Friday evening. Still seeing that pretty heavy rainfall. Our storm system skirting the coastline here. And even though it's well offshore, we still have a lot of rain uh, to talk about here. And that's what I'm talking about with that very severe flood risk. A little bit too far ahead there. I went ahead to Saturday evening. Let's scroll back to Saturday morning with our storm system just off the Japan coastline. Tokyo seeing some pretty heavy rainfall out here, but Lakima continuing to pull it off here farther towards the east. If we just pull up the winds for the same time period, I'm pretty confident in this outlook. Winds for the same time period is just offshore. Izu Oshima, that little island right there, they're going to be taking the brunt of this, and unfortunately, that is not good news at all because uh, still 29 people dead, uh, 19 people are still missing. They're starting to evacuate people from these islands. But, uh, yeah, it's still very prone to landslides, and especially since the ground is already loose and saturated from our last storm system when it came through. Well, that could spell disaster for that island out there. And this is looking at just the same uh, model outlook, which was much, much faster, showing Likima pulling our storm system farther off there towards the east. Also, that upper-level trough coming in from China. You can see the widespread rainfall extending across all of Japan. So the three of them coming together, not a big wind event coming out of it, but it is going to be a widespread rain event, even some snowfall there to portions of Hokkaido as well but much of Honshu will just be seeing some pretty heavy precipitation on Friday into Saturday morning but that is all for right now though everybody I know a long update and I kind of went in the detail there so please let me know if that helped you out and if you have any questions comments or suggestions you can always post them down in the comment box below stay safe out there everybody and thanks for watching